you are never going to guess what's inside this box. Now, if you said a chicken, you would be wrong. Definitely not a chicken. That looks good. Oh, come to the flexi head, that's excellent. Collets, some different size cups. Yeah, good. Everything you need. I'll add that to my collection. I just think they're um, comical and cute at the same time. And a weapon, you know, in case cardboard attacks. And we've got a stinger. Beautiful, good strong spring. That's something that I like to check straight up is how hard is the button. Remember some of the early welders that I had? Damn, they had hard buttons. This looks like it's serviceable. Yes, it is. So when that wears out, that's an easy replaceable part. That's always good. Yeah. But this is why we're here. Let me get this set up and I'll be right back. So this is the earth lead or return, and when you're tick welding, uh, it's electrode negative, which means the return goes in the positive. So just remember that. If you have it the other way around, your tungsten will combust. These gas fittings are also self-sealing, so they don't require um, any sort of thread goop or tape or anything. You just need to put them in and do them up nice and tight and they'll seal themselves. Very nice. <laughs> oh, yay. The thermo fan turned off. That's excellent. Try a left joint. So about a month ago, Art Captain sent me this welder. It is the TIG 200P ACDC. It's a TIG welder. And they were like, could you review it? And I was like, uh, let me think, yes. Yes, send me the welder. That would be great. Uh, it nearly didn't happen uh, when they asked me whether I, what country I was in. They're like, are you actually in Australia? And I'm like, yes, yes, I'm absolutely in Australia. And they're like, no, oh, we don't sell in Australia. And I was like, that's fine. It's all good. Uh, but then they came back to me and it's like, you know what, no, we're gonna send you a welder. And I was like, oh, thank you. So thank you, Art Captain, I appreciate that. Uh, but I, I'm reviewing this welder on one condition, which I've explained to them. That is, I have to give my honest view, point of view, my experience with how the welder went. 
and I figured the, the best way for me to really thoroughly test this machine and work out whether or not it was actually any good was to just put it to work. So that's what I've done. For the last month, I have been using this machine exclusively in the workshop. This has become my workshop machine. Uh, it come, it's come with a foot pedal. Ooh, this, this big beauty here. And uh, that's nice. I haven't had a TIG welder with a foot pedal for a long time, not since my apprenticeship. So that's been excellent. It's been nice to be able to control the amperage a bit more. And yeah, and that works fine. Very sturdy. The, the, uh, the running gear that came with the torch was all standard, uh, you know, standard collets and no gas lenses or anything. So that's probably the, 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 this is the thing that I've changed and I've just put a, uh, I've put this gas, it's stuck. Anyway, that's the only thing that I've changed is that, and that's just so that uh, because I do mostly stainless steel work uh, and I need my work to remain consistent with all the other work that I've done and do for people, I needed to put a gas lens on this. So that's why I've done that. Otherwise, the, the kit that came with it was perfectly workable. Uh, I didn't have any issues with it. What are you doing, Roland? Excuse me, I need to sort these chickens out. I think Roland's trying to... Come on, get out of here. Come on. Good chicken. Good chicken. You're a strange chook. Hey, I'm trying to shoot a video here. Thank you. So I've basically put this machine to work for the last month. It's been my main welder. As far as the pulse side of it is concerned, and for me that's a big deal because working with stainless steel, pulse is really important. The pulse has just been spot on. It's been uh, just as good as the Unimig. Uh, so n totally no disadvantage there. Uh, Art Captain claimed that it's the best under $1,000 welder on the market currently. And yeah, I mean, I haven't used all the welders, but I would have to say that Having used this machine, it's been pretty good. What are you doing? Please don't poo on the bench. So, our captain sent me a helmet to have a look at. <laughs> it's really light. Um, actually, that's the funny thing about um, this Lincoln helmet. You know, it, it really advertised that it was light, and <laughs> this is the heaviest helmet that I've ever owned. Uh, but then again, I was always, I always used to buy helmets similar to this one, sort of. Um, Expensive enough that they worked, but not so expensive that if you dropped them from a high height that you felt too bad about it. We'll just see how this goes. Um, traditionally, cheaper helmets don't have a quick enough response time fatigue, particularly because you're up close and they're not exactly the brightest arcs, and I find that they don't initiate quick enough. We'll, we'll see if that's the case. This is some 6mm stainless steel plate and a socket fitting that I need to weld in. This is off something that I'm currently building that I can't show you. And that's a, a mighty fine fit. This welding helmet worked well at these higher amps. I did discover at lower amps, it just didn't quite kick in fast enough and just for a fraction, a split second, I would get flashed and then it would be fine. So good for me, maybe not tick. I had this whole scenario played out in my head with a lot of hand waving and talking and going through the features and sort of uh, doing a deep dive into the pulse settings that I use and all that stuff. And I realized that 
that's probably not why you came here. Really, you just want to know whether it's a good welder or not. Is it value for money? Uh, yes, yes it is definitely value for money. It has done everything that I've needed it to do. As far as the function of the machine is concerned, it basically is not very different at all to my Unimig. It's definitely not a Unimig clone. There are some subtle differences in the interface and how that works. It's worth getting. If you're in the market for an inexpensive TIG welder, I would absolutely recommend this machine. I think we could have a bit of a welding lesson now. It's something you guys have asked me to do for a while and that's to just share with you some basics about TIG welding and sort of some good practices. The probably the main thing that I see that people do incorrectly uh, when they first start welding is how they hold the torch. They will grab the torch like this. They'll just grab it like a um, like you would a MIG. Uh, <laughs> that's right, just like this chicken. That is wrong. Yeah, it's totally wrong. She's just staring into your soul right now, wondering what's going on. Hey, can you? Can you? <sighs> what I see people do is they'll start off like this, which is sort of the natural thing to do, but it actually uh, is lousy for torch control. The art of TIG welding is moving very slowly, very precisely, and very consistently. Uh, basic, yeah, that, that TIG welding boils down to those three things. Being able to control this torch and move it in a very precise and even manner. Uh, because basically the closer you float this tungsten to what you're welding, the better it's going to turn out. Uh, and holding a, a torch like this, believe it or not, is not conducive to getting that sort of result. I'm going to try and make this work. But all I can tell you is that that is very uncomfortable. I've run out of articulation in my wrist to be able to do any sort of fine movements. And if I wasn't propping here on the edge, I, I wouldn't be able to do this. If, if we were closer here, let's bring this close to the edge of the table. The only way this will work is if my wrist is on there. And that means I can only move that far and now I'm already I've, um, I've rotated off the work. Like, so I could only do maybe an inch and a half of weld. I'd have to stop reposition. Inch and a half of weld. Inch and a half of weld. Um, that's about all you'll get out of that style. Now, holding it like this is though appropriate for walking the cup, which is not something as a beginner you really have to worry about, but I'll just mention it. So. Holding the torch like a big chimp does work for walking the cup. In fact, you've got to hold it like that. So that's the only time that that is the correct technique. But for the rest of the time, you really want to be holding it just like this. So instead of holding it like this, what if we just put your hand out like that and pop the torch in the middle and we're going to grip it and your pointer finger now actuates is now the trigger finger if you like. And what this allows you to do is you now have a full range of movement with your wrist. I can now start welding here and weld all the way along and using combination of my elbow and wrist movement I can maintain consistent angle, I can maintain uh, a really steady height, good height control. Now watch how far I can move maintain a good torch angle I mean I can just span the entirety of that you just have a lot more movement you have um, it's a lot more comfortable this is a this is just something that you'll need to master and practice um, I also find that holding a torch like this uh, the uh, the weight of the lead is less of an issue because of these fingers are sort of pivoting. See how I can sort of lift the back of the torch around. It's just better all the way around. Come on. 
hop down. If you're interested in this machine, um, there is going to be a link uh, in the description if you wanted to use that. Uh, I will be receiving a small commission from that sale, so that's just uh, a small way that you can help support me and what I'm doing here. Uh, that would be much really greatly appreciated. But um, yeah, and I'm, I'm only putting that link there because I I really like this machine. I think it's a uh, it's yeah it it does what it's supposed to do. It it's a welder, and it welds. Thank you for watching, and um, yeah, see you guys. Our welding inspector. Is it to your satisfaction? Good. Good. Quality assured. <laughs>